many times the Lord has told me to fan into flame the gift of God within the person. Fan into flame the gift of God within a person. Well, we know that is a scripture. We know that's a good thing to do. But how do you know if a person has the gift of God within them? How do they know? Thirty odd years ago, the church, the body of Christ, was a much different group of people. It was the 1980s. I'd just become a Christian, 1984. Within a few years, being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the fire of God, it was at an event called Spring Harvest in the UK. It was an annual event, I believe it's still going, but in those days it was a harvest at every spring and it was run for three weeks in one venue, then two venues, then three venues in the UK. And the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to whosoever would receive. Once you've received the Holy Spirit, the gift of God within you, there's a fire within you. The fire of the Holy Spirit. The passion of God, the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is the same as the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And when you let the Holy Spirit in, He is within you. And, and the Scriptures come to life, and you begin to understand life from God's perspective, because the Holy Spirit of God is within. And this was 35, 38 years ago. Fan into flame the gift of God within. One of the first words of knowledge I had and I gave out in a church meeting in the 80s was a very simple picture. And usually it was a picture in, in, in two frames, as it were. Picture A, picture B. And usually picture B was the interpretation. So, in a, a Christian church meeting, exercising spiritual gifts, this particular church group was encouraged to exercise spiritual gifts. If anybody has a word, a picture, a scripture that God has told them to, to share, now's the time. And then the fellowship waited, and those who spoke out, they spoke out. And those who didn't, didn't. We tested and weighed everything. So fan into flame the gift of God within. And this was 35 years ago. I had a picture of a candle, and it was, it was just a single candle burning, and it was the usual flame of a candle. But then as I was looking at this picture, the, the flame started to dwindle. But then as I kept looking at the picture, the flame came back, but brighter than before. And I just gave it out. And I didn't give an interpretation. It was for someone to, uh, to put the hand up or speak out and say, yes, that was me. And when no one said anything, I thought, well, maybe that was just my imagination. This was 35 years or more ago. We were exercising spiritual gifts 
it was an odd thing to do. And I thought, well, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe that's just my imagination. And I didn't say anything. I, you know, just went home eventually. That evening, about an hour later, somebody from the fellowship phoned me up at home and said, that was me. I'm sorry I didn't say anything at the time, but God has confirmed it's me. She said, my faith is dwindling. I feel my faith is dying. But God has given you that picture to give out because God is encouraging me. Even though my faith is dwindling and dying seemingly, in time it comes back brighter, shines brighter. And she said, thank you. Her husband was, uh, if you like, a churchgoer, supporting his wife and his children. The children were in Sunday school. The husband accompanied his wife to church, meaning the building. But he wasn't part of the church, meaning the body of Christ. He was a church attender, a church goer. But as far as a believer, he was not a believer. Not even a believer. He was just a churchgoer, but not even a believer. How do I know? Because I invited him to come out to the FGB, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Federation International uh, Monthly Dinners for the presentation of testimonies about Jesus Christ, a man-to-man -man thing. And I would invite him and he would refuse. He came once or twice, then eventually he'd had enough of being invited. And so it's hard for a wife to maintain faith in Christ if the husband was a lovely guy, nice man, good human being, a good man, put food on the table for his family. But as far as being involved in local church, he just attended and that was it. And they took it in turns. Come to church one week, go out with the family the next week. And so her faith was dwindling, dying. But God said, I know where you are. Your faith is dwindling. The flame is, is going out. But in time, it will come back brighter, shining brighter. Uh, many years later, a few, well, I say a few years later, maybe four or five years later, maybe less, I discovered, I met the husband down the city one day, bumped into him, and uh, he had been gloriously saved, set free from the spirits of this world. He and his wife went on to be part of a Christian ministry in the city, Norwich, UK. So not only did her faith come back much brighter. He discovered Christ himself. He received the Holy Spirit. And then between them, they became the church, the body of Christ of two. And of course, their family are part of their household of faith. So fan into flame the gift of God within those around you. But what about if it's you whose faith is dwindling, dying? Well, humble yourself, seek out a good brother or good sister in Christ, a mature brother, good sister, good brother in Christ, friend in Christ, and ask them to pray for you. And God, who will answer your prayer, he will bring your flame back brighter. This is what God wants from us, faith. When Jesus comes, he says, will I find faith on earth? Christ is looking for faithful activists, people who are active with their faith in Christ, but moving in the spiritual gifts, including faith. Faith is a spiritual gift. There are certain Bible teachers in this world who deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit, They deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They de deny the spiritual gifts. They deny prophecy is for now. They deny, 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 deny. 
and they pick and choose bits of the Bible that they allow for spiritual gifts that they approve. But of course, prophecy for those people is a spiritual gift they don't want to have in their life individually, and they don't want people prophesying to them. Prophecy is the spiritual gift to eagerly desire most. This is what the Bible teaches us. This is what the early disciples knew and understood. Eagerly desire Holy Spirit gifts, says Jesus, says the Holy Spirit himself in Scripture. Eagerly desire Holy Spirit gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And once you've received the gift of prophecy, which is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, to prophesy, you need the other gifts as well. As God apportions the gifts, you can't buy them, you can't sell them. It's God who gives gifts to those that he chooses to give gifts to. And the more you exercise the gifts, the more you receive more of the gifting. There are many churches going wrong, but they've decided they're right. And so if a person is right, you can't put them right because they are already right. And of course, they believe that in their rightness, their righteousness, that you are wrong, no matter what you say. And they reject you. They reject you, they reject the message, they won't listen, they won't entertain, they won't listen, they will shut their ears because they don't want to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And they might say, well, we don't want to receive from you as an instrument, we want another instrument. And they say to God, I don't want this man to prophesy to me, I want somebody else. But that's part of God speaking to them. Remember the donkey, Balaam's ass. The prophet didn't know there was an angel blocking his way. And eventually the donkey sees the angel and stops. And Balaam, the prophet, starts to beat the donkey because the, the prophet can't understand why the donkey won't continue the journey. But the donkey has seen an angel standing there blocking the way. And the donkey speaks, what have I done to you that you should beat me like this? Have I ever done this before? And then his eyes are open and he sees, he sees the angel. God's angels are God's angels. Messengers from the very throne room of God, descending and ascending. We are not angels. We are human beings, spiritual human beings. Again, the Bible will tell you that we are like angels. We are messengers like angels, like aliens in this foreign land of this world. And it truly is becoming a more perverse, wicked, depraved, lost generation. They go about their business as if everything is okay. Jesus said it, as in the days of Noah, they'll be eating and drinking, and the end shall come. This is the 14th of May, 2022. This is the same message, if you like, 38 years ago. The message hasn't changed. Every generation there are depraved, wicked, evil, perverse living people. And then there are the righteous people of God. There's only two kingdoms, light and darkness, truth and lies. But you know all this. You are believers in Christ, but some of you are mature in these things. You understand. And, and I've seen the gap between the two kingdoms as increasing year by year, day by day. 1,989 years ago, the first day of Pentecost, the group of disciples went out, P 
Peter preached that first sermon in, sermon in the power of the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 households were added to the church, the body of Christ, on that first day of Pentecost, 1,989 days a, uh, years ago. If you multiply that by 365, then you get this figure that every day this society, this world, is moving further away from that first day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh, young men, young and old men and women were prophesying, dreaming dreams, having visions. Where's the church today? The church is broken up into 50,000 plus voices and society sees the church as irrelevant. They won't go to church on a Sunday or any day. Maybe they'll go to a church coffee morning and give some money to charity and they feel they've done their bit. But many people sitting in church cafes every day of the week, giving their money and buying food, eating and drinking. Many of those are just churchgoers. They believe their goodness is enough to get them into heaven. I gave to charity. I did this. I did that. But we know the gift of God is given. You cannot buy the gift of God. You cannot buy the blood of Jesus. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit. You cannot buy God. God is sovereign over all. Father, your children, Jesus, your disciples, Holy Spirit, your vessels. Lord, you know who are yours. You know who belong to you, Jesus. They're the ones who truly repented. At some point in their life, they realized they needed a savior. And they understood the sinful nature of each one of us, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And, and, and we made a, a commitment to you, Jesus. We recognize you died for us. You shed your blood for us to pay the price for us, for me. And repentance is a gift. Forgiveness is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. He is given to us to help us. The counselor the comforter, the instructor. He's the one who directs our path. He's the one who helps us to manage our own lives accordingly, according to scripture, according to the will of the Father, according to Christ, the way of Christ, the way of the Holy Spirit, the way of God. One way to heaven, Christ. There is no other way a man can be saved except through Christ, and then by repentance, genuine, full, permanent repentance, a turning away from everything off the past. Yesterday is finished, it's gone. This morning has gone. An hour ago has gone. We are moving forward in time. Our prayer now is for those who are open to the Holy Spirit, who are willing to change, willing to receive Christ. As many as receive Christ, he gives them the right to be called sons of God. He is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah. The names of Christ are there to be read in the scripture. He's the light to this world. He's the living bread, the living water. Where else can we go except to Christ to receive the very words of life? Jesus is coming. Today is the day of salvation. Only the Father know when, when Jesus is coming. 
And we are told very clearly, live as children of the day, so the coming of the Lord will not surprise you like a thief in the night. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK, 14th of May, 2022, will speak again by the will of God. God bless you.